Bill Belichick and the Patriots really could do something that we can go, wow, we've never seen that before because that's exactly what they did last week, according to Tony Romo. Did you hear about this? Which one? Uh, the Patriots. Yeah, I know. Taking I know on the, the Eagles. Patriots, but... I don't know what it was exactly, yeah. but Lockdown CB uh, noted it too. He goes, what was the defensive coverage the Patri Patriots were showing that Tony Romo said he had never seen before? Did you see anything on film as we transitioned to the Eagles taking on the Patriots? Patriots doing a good job of slowing down the Eagles. They did. Maybe a little rust. Maybe they should play in the preseason right. is what Nick Sirianni said. Well, but, 100%. I mean, yeah. what's one thing? we And we said that Sunday night. We saw all the teams that didn't play in the preseason, for the most part, did not look very good. Yeah. And then some of them won. I know that. But, yeah, the ones that didn't play, it, it showed. It looked like, you know, you watch Joe Burrow, you watch Lamar Jackson, those offenses go, yeah, looks like a team that didn't play much, right? They look rusty. So, for real, same with the Eagles. I think I know the play you're talking about. And I think he's talking about they had a blitz cover zero play where, you know, usually when everybody blitzes, okay, and this is going to be a thing for the Eagles. This is what the Chiefs showed everybody last year. Blitz the Eagles a little bit. The Eagles do – Jalen Hurts, they don't have the greatest plan to stop the blitz. Mm. That showed up again in this. They were blitzed, and the, I think at, you know the Patriots, after a few times doing it, go, they don't have a great plan. Let's keep doing it. We'll tactically every now and then sprinkle this in and give them problems. But I think the play he's talking about, and I think I actually heard him say this, it was cover zero, and he threw a shallow cross. The – Eagles were on the right of the screen going left. And they usually cover zero is man-to-man -man across the board, right, with no yep. free safety. You know that. The listeners of our podcast, the homies, you know that. But they have some rules where it's like, wait, if my guy, I'm man-to-man, -man and he just flies across the middle, I'm not going to try to chase him. We'll pass it off because that means somebody else is coming into my area. And I think that was the play he was talking about. They played a cover zero where they were aware that they might run, hey, this guy goes this way, so you cover him, and then my guy is going to come to you underneath and just wait for him and make the tackle. And that is a little unusual. It's something the Patriots do, but you don't see those route combinations that sometimes show it and like it just kind of unveil it like that the way sure. it did in the game. Sure. And it is a little different, for sure. There's not a lot of teams that go, let's pass off cover zero. And that's where I'm telling you the Patriots yep. are very well coached and some things like that. All right, so this is yeah. interesting because I think uh, some people think that <laughs> – Okay, there, oh, there we go. Sam Flood <laughs> has made right. his prediction He's known. He's saying it. He shouldn't be saying that. He should know we're neutral here as, yeah, a, neutral. as a news yeah. organiza organization. We still make picks. <laughs> but he's a root. homer. He yeah, can't he's help a homer, it. Big-time homer. Um, so I, I think that's interesting with the Eagles because I think part of the – the talk on them was that, oh, this is the Ross, this is the preseason. But you think this is maybe somewhat of a continuation of what the Chiefs showed last year in the Super Bowl. Like, this might be a blueprint on how to slow down the Eagles' offense. Not everybody has the talent on D that the Chiefs and the Patriots have. Sure. But, yes, I think there's some things there. I do. You know, would I say the offense seemed to – you know, now, and the one thing I want to see going forward is the, the, the Shane Steichen effect here, too. Mm. I think it's something to watch. You know, the offense, it certainly didn't flow the same way. I didn't feel like, you know me, it's not about always it has to be the most creative thing, but it's about tying plays together, right? That's where Sir Sirianni's special and, and, or, and, and in Shane Steichen, where it would be like, oh, here's this play and here's this play, and then, oh, here's this play. No, it's not that play. It's something that looks just like that, but it's a little different, and now we've gashed you for 25 yards. There wasn't a flow in that sense to me in the offensive game plan. Now, was that rust? Was it the weather a little bit? Sure, all of that you know, played a part. But here was the other thing that I would say jumped out to me. The blitzing? Yep. Certainly. The late disguises that I talked about. So the, the Eagles are too – they like to call two plays in the huddle. And, you know, you, we oh, you're in too deep. Here we're going to run the ball. Oh, you're in single safety. Well, now you're going to be man-to-man -man with our guys outside or it's going to be some sort of, you know, one-on-one-ish zone or managed matchup, right? Am I explaining sure. that right? So then they go, okay, well, now we're going to throw it. You're going to try to outnumber us in the box. New England was very good at toying with that, where it's too deep, it's too deep. Said hot, the ball's being snapped. Oh, it's single safety. So now they're in a too deep play, but it's a single safety play hmm. on defense. And now, okay, they thought they were going to be running the ball with advantage in the numbers, and now they don't have the advantage. And it's oh man, now we don't. The run game doesn't work. Or or it was the opposite, right? Single safety. Let's get to the pass play. Oh, now it's too deep, right? So there was some of that. Then also. What they did, too, a great job of is played single safety, showed it, 
knowing they were going to go into a pass with that. And within that single safety, they were very quick to get back to their zones, right? There's there, there little calls and things you have to say where, hey, we're going to play, you know, cover three, but we want to play quick drop off of it. We don't want you to, like, fill into the hole so strong. Let's, right. let's quick, let's, as soon as he says hut, it's cover three, but we want to get out into a certain area. So that's where they did really well, too. They played with the Eagles that way. And then on top of that, like I just said about, you know, them playing the Dolphins, they have some big people that allow them to – Again, mess with the fronts. And to the other thing they did, like the, we talked about the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, like they just, you, you got to create some chaos against them. If it's like chalkboard stuff, the Eagles are going to win. They're too good. So you got to do some things to go, wait, they might not have prepared for this, and this is going to make things hard. So, oh, oh, wait, let's put two guys in the A-gap. One guy drops back. Oh, they tried to pull and do this, but our guy in the A-gap kind of messed up the puller. Now he's deeper in the backfield. He doesn't get to the right guy, and we get a one-yard run gain instead of like it being you know 15 yards like we see the yeah. Eagles do so often. I mean, they really limited their explosive plays. The longest really run did. they had was 16 yards. Kenneth Gainwell, the longest pass was 23 yards to – A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, his longest catch was 13 yards. Exactly right. There were no big plays. They basically. got good corners. They played off for the most part, off with various techniques, right? And so sometimes they might, it's three deep, but they might say, let's say lock the back corner. So it's three deep. So now the safety knows I can cheat to the front corner. That corner plays off with his back to the sideline. So he sees the quarterback. And now he's backing off, so you can't make a big throw down the field or anything like that. The safety's cheating over that way. And then the corner on the other side, he all of a sudden gets inside. And now it's like, okay, you can't really go inside on me. So if you don't have a go route or an out route, it's, you're, you're going to be in trouble here trying to get open. Yeah. And so they did things like that. They gave various techniques on the outside, even though they played a ton of single safety defenses to where the Eagles could never just be like, okay, a single safety man, let's get to these plays. You know, it was never like, okay, oh, it looks like a single safety man, but is, is it man? I don't know. Said, oh, no, it was three deep. It wasn't a single safety man, you know, or some sort of single safety sure. defense. And that played with the, the brains of the Eagles and of course them being a little rusty on top of that I think was you know added to it cryptic beagle six says to us watching live seemed like Jalen Hurts really struggled to read the Patriots defense seemed yes. to be a combination of lack of preseason reps Hurts not taking the next step at reading defenses and the Patriots defense being the real deal what are your thoughts now you know we've moved on as a podcast what last year we ripped on Tua we don't do that anymore because he's just thrown for too many yards uh, Jalen Hurts we did it last well, yeah, year we, Tua played great yeah you know <laughs> Tua, hey Tua just kidding, we're not right? moving on. Yeah, if the tape not. warrants yeah. it. Yeah, right. No, Tua made some dicey decisions in that one, too. I mean, he should have. And we talked about it on Sunday. There were some plays more out there to be had. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is the thing we're all going to watch for. Jalen Hurts is awesome. I know that. Am I ready to anoint him top five quarterback in football? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm different that way. And that's just that's just You the know way what's it funny? Is. is like you're not different, though. A lot of people looked, have come uh, yeah. out and said it. I know. It's like he's in the 7 to 10 range for a lot of other people. Exactly right. The the ESPN thing with NFL executives, they all put him there. I know there's a ton of people that know football that have all put him in that area. But either way, he's really good. The thing I'll come back to and the thing that you heard me say last year and what I know in the offseason with teams that played Philly that I talked to coaches and everything is, hey, he's really awesome. We know that. But when you can get him to play traditional quarterback way, there's still some things there that need work, and that's what all teams are trying to do with the Eagles. Because when the quarterback run game and the run game start to work, you're just totally screwed. Mm -hmm. So teams are going to favor, let's try to slow that down, and then let's see if we can make him drop back, dice us up with the passing game, great decisions and all that. Yeah, it was a wet ball. He didn't see the field great during the day. He didn't throw the ball his best either, but they made him uncomfortable mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. I think that was the big thing. But yeah, uh, you know that 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 to me is the thing to watch with the Eagles here because the Eagles we know how awesome they are. So hurts, but it's not even necessarily a hurts thing. They've been able to, like we've talked about so much, dominate people in the run game to such an extent that it's defenses have to play these simple. We got to stop the run defenses, yeah. and that's led to an advantageous look and passing game and made it very easy for him. And I just wonder, Super Bowl team. Everybody's stealing their plays a little bit. Everybody studied them this offseason. 
is they're going to need some new wrinkles is what I'm saying. Yeah. I wonder if that if we're going to see that as we go forward. I don't know if that's going to matter this week against the Vikings defense, but we'll see. Well, I, I almost am wondering if Miles Sanders is a bigger loss than we were giving him credit for. Not that he's one of the top running backs out there. And I think he definitely benefited from the the Steelers and everything that was around. But, I mean, do you think that running game will be as dynamic as it was last year? I, 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 they do have Swift, but he got one carry for three I yards. Do. I still think it's it, it's going to be a damn, damn good running game. Like I said, I think they played a really good defense there. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty stacked, and they got a little bit of everything. So, yeah, I still expect it to be one of the best in football. Um, yeah, I was surprised Swift didn't get a few more carries and everything there. But one of the things I wrote in my thing, you know, the Patriots are good at defending RPOs. So that was kind of taken away during the game. That's one thing they love to do, mm-hmm. right? You know, and they're good at the RPOs. Why? Because they play Josh Allen and the Bills, who do a ton of it. And, of course, the Dolphins, who were the kings of the RPOs. So they know how to kind of defend that. And the other thing I just – I wrote, Pats, the Pats kind of scared – the Eagles away from the run game with some of those looks I talked about. They kept playing these run defenses going, you'll check to the pass play, and then say set hut, and they all dropped out, right? Hmm. And a little bit of that going on too, to where I don't think the Eagles – and then the Eagles, O-line, they didn't play a ton, if any. Some of them, I think, played. Some didn't, whatever. So they don't think they were on their A game either. Um, and it is a new offensive coordinator. And he's, I'm sure, does a new way of calling plays and an outlook. So those are things to watch for over the Eagles. We know they're still going to be awesome, though. Yeah, what do you expect against the Vikings tomorrow, Thursday night football? So it was last year on Monday night football, the Eagles torched the Vikings. Yeah, it was 24-7, right. wasn't even really that close, right. if I remember correctly. What do you think? you think they get right, that offense shows a little bit more? I do. I, do, I just don't see – you know, the one thing I'll say is be flow – the D coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, of course, yeah. is from New England. So he's going to look at the film and go, wait, I know these calls. I know how they're coaching this. This is what they're doing. But, of course, because of that, the Eagles on Monday worked on, hey, wait, you know, usually when you uh, – Monday and you lose a game, you might go on the field and do a little walkthrough on the plays you didn't execute the right way to mm-hmm. kind of go, wait, hey, these are teams are going to start doing this to us, so now we need to figure out how we're going to do this, Right. So they're going to be a little ready for that as well. And the Vikings are not nearly as talented as the Patriots on defense. So, you know, will they have some good schematical things? Sure. But I think that the Eagles will get back on track. Are the Vikings really going to start 0-2? Is that what they're going to do? I, I think so. I, think so. I mean, well, we talked about it. You know, it was a miracle last year. And I think you and I both agree that they were the third best roster in their division. You know, I'm certainly not going to put them in front of your Lions or the Packers. I'm not. Not the roster. No way. So we'll see. But that'll be fun to watch Thursday night. Yo, yo, thanks for watching, homies. I appreciate it. As always, the NFL season is right around the corner. So now it's your turn to hit subscribe to Chris Sims Unbutton. If you want to get all the training camp battles, preseason film review, playoff predictions, and much, much more, you know where to find it. It's right here, Chris Sims Unbutton. Please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.